Over the last three decades or so, General Motors have been quite prolific when it comes to electric vehicles. In the mid-90s, they launched the GM EV1, which was quite a game changer actually at the time. The problem with it was that they only leased it and once the lease is finished they notoriously recalled them and scrapped the lot although a few have survived. More recent years at the North American International Motor Show in January 2007 GM unleashed its Voltec technology on the world. Now that was an extended range hybrid very very clever system which utilized electric vehicle technology providing it with a smallish range of about 50 miles or so but accompanied by a gas generator which extended its range but that gas generator was not coupled to the front wheels you could run it in EV only the production vehicle of that car debuted in 2010 as a 2011 model and I had one, mine was a 2013. That car started off with a very small 16 kilowatt hour battery pack. Uh, in 2013, which was the one that I had, they increased it to 16.5 kilowatt hours. And then when they debuted the second generation model in 2016, they upped it to 17.1 kilowatt hours. All tiny by today's standards. And indeed, before that vehicle went out of production, they introduced a new platform that was specific for EVs called the BEV2. And their Chevrolet Bolt was on that platform. As with the Volt, a version of it was sold by Opel in Europe as well. The Bolt originally had a 60 kilowatt hour battery pack, but when the car was revised in 2020, that went up to 66 kilowatt hours. So its range went up from about 240 miles to 260 miles, which is more palatable. There was no replacement other than they made a statement that they wanted to shift everything to this new Ultium platform. Now the Ultium battery technology is a nickel, cobalt, manganese, aluminium affair. That debuted um, when the BEV3 platform was launched a couple of years ago. The first production car that was off that platform was the Hummer EV, which is on the BT1 platform. And uh, there are two, <laughs> it's where it gets confusing. There are two effective platforms, the BT1, which is an off-road platform, and the BEV3, which replaced the BEV2, uh, which applies to all the road cars. The first BV3 platform car was the Cadillac Lyric. That debuted about 18 months ago. Radically styled. We've actually had one of those very briefly. But the second car that is off that platform is this, which is the Chevrolet Blazer EV. But we're going to have a look around it talk more about its technical details and the thing I like about this car is the fact that it looks a bit more conventional than many EVs and we'll go into that too. And then we'll take it for a drive and uh, I'll let you know if I really want to buy one of these because I'm seriously thinking about it. I'm Darren Walker and this is Auto Atlantica. So this Ultium platform is going to spawn a host of General Motors models. There are going to be smaller versions of this platform. One has already been debuted, that's the Equinox EV by Chevrolet. And uh, there's going to be a Cadillac version of that called the Optic. And uh, then there's going to be a Vestic, which is sort of more of a, a mid-size version as well. So it'll be interesting to see how all this plays out. Likewise, GM have announced a new Bolt on this platform too would be the smallest version of this platform and um, that's going to debut in sometime in 2025. Now while the Blazer and the Equinox have these familiar nameplates like the petrol or gas powered cars they look completely different and uh, that is intentional. This is a 2LT model so uh, the initial 2LTs come with 
uh, various option packs which give it a similar range of equipment to the more expensive RS and it's the 2LT and the RS which are the first off the line. The RS differs by having lower profile tyres and a full front light bar which does all the same tricks as the Lyric. Now as far as the styling's concerned, it is much more conventional than the Lyric. You've got more conventional looking tail lights. The belt line, I do like that Coke bottle look, uh, which is very reminiscent of cars from the 70s for instance. This also has more conventional door handles, which I really like compared to the flip out affairs that you see on so many EVs, including the Lyric. I like the fact that this car has at least a modicum of a rear windscreen wiper. So we've got a few bits and pieces in here, uh, but uh, as you can see, this sort of squared off look offers quite a bit of uh, luggage space in here as well. Rear seat passengers are treated to a humongous amount of room. This car is about 195 inches long but 78 inches wide so it's almost got the same footprint as my Jaguar XJ40. Consequently you get a massive amount of rear leg room here. You've got these really nice ventilation vents which remind me a lot of the what's in the smaller tracks. There's two USB-C's there as well. These seats are a sort of like a leatherette and vented cloth affair which is very comfortable actually. So the option packs on this 2LT model include heated mirrors and an auto dimming mirror as well not just on the driver's door but also for the rear view mirror as well. It's got a heated seats they're also part of the option packs same with the heated steering wheel too. The seats are electronically controlled. It's, there is an eight-way adjustment on both the driver and passenger seats. And in the middle, you get wireless phone charging as well. As soon as you climb aboard, there is no stop-start button, which can be a little bit intimidating, but you can turn the car on from the key fob. The driver's screen enables you to have a whole variety of different displays depending on what your tastes are and what your priorities are and what information you actually want to see. In any case, Chevrolet has catered to every taste, I think, with this setup. So you can manage music through the Bluetooth. I know a lot of people are upset about this lack of CarPlay functionality, for instance but the only thing I use CarPlay for personally is this uh, navigation, but assuming that you just won't have access to Waze until Waze and other apps are, are actually made functional on this system. So for me personally, thinking about buying one of these, does it really matter? To me, no, but that might be a deal breaker for some people. Uh, these are generic OnStar controls, and uh, this is a standard GM mirror as well. I like the way that it all integrates really nice into this uh, black um, uh, headlining. And uh, these <laughs> sort of spacecraft style events are really are superb. It kind of reminds me of the uh, Nostromo in Alien. This centre console is quite wide thanks to whatever's underneath here. Um, but you've got this you've got this very nice sort of piano black uh, affair now it does leave fingerprints unfortunately um, so you're going to have to sort of keep uh, something with you to clean that off and then two very nice deep cup holders and then as I've said before this has got the optional wireless phone charger and then in the middle here you've got a reasonable center console storage I think my Shih Tzus actually would really like this because as long as I put something over here then uh, they could both probably lie on this. That's why they like being in a truck so much. Okay, so now we've managed to uh, fumble our way through the uh, various electronics and screens in this car. You know, this does leave our heads scratching a little bit, uh, especially with this move away from Apple CarPlay and Android Auto because Tommy and I have just been discussing this 
and uh, for him that would make a big difference because you are going to have to wait for GM to basically download these apps or make these apps that we're so used to available on this platform, on this system. Uh, whereas with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, of course, they already come with it. Now, you can bet your bottom dollar that the car manufacturers will likely do that in the future, or GM will likely do that in the future, but it's going to start charging for apps that it considers premium. For me, however, it wouldn't be an issue because I really only use Apple CarPlay for the maps. And since it's Google based, this has this is all Google uh, Maps anyway. Let's uh, let's take a spin. Now, this car weighs over 5,200 pounds. Forget what that is in kilos, about 2,400 kilos, I think. Um, so, as with all EVs, weight is not on its side. However, it gives it the kind of presence and feel of driving a truck. And what I like about the uh, 2LT, which this is, over the RS, is that it has these higher profile tyres, almost similar to truck tyres. I think these are 20 inch wheels on this, they're almost the same as my truck. The wheels themselves are, uh, the jury's out for me because as with a lot of EVs they are special uh, designed uh, wheels, alloy wheels and uh, they're made to be super aerodynamic but uh, you know they're decent but I actually prefer these to the lower profile tyres on the RS. Now coming to different models, a 1LT basic car is supposed to be in the works. It was announced and then it was unannounced but there's rumours that that still will be available. The 2LT, which this is, uh, comes with all-wheel drive and the 85 kilowatt hour battery that gives you a range of about 280 miles. The RS also comes with all-wheel drive as well, that's two motor setup with the same range but that gets a few more toys it's about, as I've said, it's about $7,000 more, which is a hill of money, uh, considering the few extra toys that you get. Most of the difference is actually cosmetic. Both of these cars produce 288 horsepower. Um, the torque figure I will have to look up because I've forgotten it. Later this year, um, Chevrolet is going to add an SS model. So that will come with all-wheel drive, and it will have the Lyrics 102 kilowatt-hour battery pack but it's a performance battery pack. So it's going to provide you with 557 brake horsepower and 680 pound-feet of torque. Again, I will flag that up on the screen. In addition, later this year, there is going to be an RS rear-wheel drive, that's a single motor model, again with that same larger 102 kilowatt hour battery pack. That will give you an increased range like the, uh, exactly the same as the Lyric actually, of a 320 miles. So 40 more miles, which to be honest with you for me is more, a bit more appealing. These higher profile tyres really do give it a very, very comfortable ride. It's like I say, it, dry, it feels very much like my truck and if I got one of these, it would replace my truck. I don't really need a pickup truck. I very, very rarely use the functionality of a pickup truck and I've been looking to replace it with either a truck base SUV or an EV. I can't afford a truck base EV so the, I'm afraid that the Escalade IQ uh, with its $150,000-$160,000 price tag is out of my reach. This particular model, the 2LT with these option packs, um, stickers at around 50,000. But the beauty is you can use the 7,500 tax credit now, thanks to changes in legislation, as a down payment. And the manufacturer will give you that 7,500 so you don't claim it later against your taxes. The nice thing is, is that uh, you'll get that even if your income is so high that you wouldn't qualify for the 
tax credit anyway. Now there are some notable things missing, for instance the panoramic, there's no panoramic sunroof available in this car, at least not on the all-wheel drive versions. That is going to be available on the rear-wheel dri rear drive car. And to make matters more confusing, GM is planning to uh, announce a front-wheel drive version, again with a single motor, at some point in the next two years. So, yeah, that's General Motors. So you're going to have a whole host of different powertrain options and range options uh, on this car over the next few years. I really like the size of it. I like the width. It's got that truck width to it. That is really appealing. I like the fact that it has a decent range, although I'd prefer something over 300 miles. But I like the fact that it's fast charging as well. It will fast charge about uh, 30 to 40% in 10 minutes, which is handy. I really like the way that it drives. This does drive, I have to say, more like a truck than a car. And for me, that's a good thing. And that's simply because of the size of it. I mean, it's absolutely enormous. This, as I've said, this has the same footprint as my XJ40. Okay, so I've just taken it down uh, one of the uh, notoriously rough roads locally. And as with my truck, this just soaks everything up beautifully, uh, which is what I like about uh, this car. Uh, Tommy and I have just been discussing whether it's worth actually replacing my truck with something like this. Now again, this car isn't meant to replace the functionality of a pickup truck, obviously. However, it does have some qualities of the truck, and that is there's that it rides similar to one. It obviously isn't as big, but I like the extra width that you get like the truck. But this has the, obviously, the SUV interior room that I'm looking for as well. Let's get on to EVs in general and what they have to deal with and that is the infrastructure in this country now i would charge this at home on a level two i'd have a level two installed i don't know if gm give you anything towards that or not i don't know if they give you any free charging on dcfc's like mercedes does for instance we've still got this issue with charging now the beauty is is that from 2025 GM is going to also adopt the NACS charging system that Tesla operates in addition to the standard CCS1. They are putting more and more charges in. Uh, they say now that for every six gas stations there is now one EV charging station in the United States and that's a good thing. But I still worry about going on a road trip and being able to have that kind of functionality the car can only do so much the car will tell you where the charges are and if they're in use or not and they will ch tell you what the um the the charging output as well this car like i say can charge up to 150 which is the other is the one thing i don't like about it when so many evs are able to charge up to 250 and in some cases even 350 kilowatts that may be a future improvement on the Blazer EV. But it's these improvements that are quite rapid as the technology quickly progresses, which makes cars like this depreciate like Turkish Lira. And that's the one other major aspect that I need to consider, especially if I'm replacing a pickup truck, which tends to depreciate more slowly. This is the charging port. So you just oh, you press there and it opens up and this is your standard uh, CCS1 charger and you've got the level 2 charging ports underneath. There it is. There we go. And then you press this button to send the whole thing raising back up. So there we have it. This is my first experience with a Chevrolet Blazer EV. This one is the 2LT model as we said and I've really enjoyed my time with it. There's an awful lot of pluses for me personally with this car in replacing the, my truck with it. There's 
a number of doubts too, which I've seriously got to consider, which was covered in the video. But I hope you've enjoyed watching this. Please do consider liking and subscribing because the more you do that, the more I can get some interesting vehicles like this on the channel. I'm Darren Walker and this is Auto Atlantica.